Welcome everyone to the third session of Book Clubs Across Borders between Faisalabad and Post. This is our uh, third session and we're going to be discussing the book 99 Nights in Logar by um, Jamil Jan Kochai. It's a book placed in Afghanistan. Jamil Jan is in Afghan and uh, he talks about um, his story, which is that he's an immigrant. Um, he moved from Afghanistan to Peshawar and then from Peshawar he moved to the United States. And um, the book is placed in Logar. Logar is a, is a place in Afghanistan and his maternal side of the family, which means his mother's side of the family was based there. Um, every time he would visit that place, he uh, remembered as a child being taken back to his roots and create memories that remained with him. Throughout his life, while he was growing up in the United States, he felt a deep and um, resonating connection with Afghanistan. And he just wanted to share his heritage with everyone around him. And uh, um, the book means very dearly to him. It is his first book that came out and he's working on his second book. And um, the reason why this book was chosen uh, for the book clubs is because it talks about a young child and it talks about the young child who is rooted in another environment, but still feels deeply connected to his own space, like the place where he belongs to, his ethnic place. So um, he's an Afghan through and through. And um, even though he is living in the United States, he has um, you know, he has maintained his Afghan connection. He's very proud of it. And um, he feels strongly that the Afghanistan that he remembers, the Afghanistan that he recollects is the Afghanistan that he wants to share with the world around him, especially in this current um, world of uh, digital media, of, uh, of, of the world becoming a global village. Most of the imagery that comes out of Pakistan and Afghanistan is a very negative one, a one in which um, all we hear is about terrorism, a lack of infrastructure, lack of education, lack of um, human life, the value for human life. And he wants to negate that, um, that narrative and bring to them the human element of being in and Afghanistan, he wants to talk to the world and explain to them that we are also people like everybody else. We have the surprise and the same fears. We have the same jubilance and the same joy. As children, we explore the world around us with the same curiosity as the world. Same anxiety, same. I mean, like, um, for example, in the book, we come across the character of the dog and uh, Jamil John's personal interaction with the dog and how it frames his personality. He has a sort of uh, fear and also a sort of deep desire to be more invested in his relationship with that dog that comes across. Um, another thing that we see very book, of course, the first thing that comes across is this wonderful narrative, but also a sort of deep desire to go back to that place where he has this deep connection where people look like him, where people talk like him. And even though he might not know them, but just by being so similar to them, he has a sort of connection already. And uh, um, like growing up in a, in a multicultural country like America, where there are so many people, so many different ethnicities, he misses his own people. He misses his own identity and uh, his own landscape because where he is in America is very different from where he was in Afghanistan in Logar. So there is that deep connection that we feel that is constantly being um, asked of the, of, the, of the reader to explore with him. And there is that absolute love for the place that, that, that comes across very strongly as we read the book. So um, on that note, I'd like to go to my friends in Afghanistan and ask them, as they were reading this book, what did they feel? Do you think 
that Jameel Jan Kochai has done a good job of explaining what being an Afghan is all about, of, um, of uh, sharing his reality of Logar. And um, if you would maybe like to talk to us, if you have been to Logar, and if you would like to talk to us about what you imagine Logar to, to be like so that our audience in Pakistan can get a flavor of Afghanistan. So course, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Alia. You put a very good book over the book, as we read the book. Uh, so uh, it's a very uh, good book uh, indeed. But uh, generally, Jamil Jan Kuchi has done a very good job just because he has poured, he has given the place to all the problems that are we are culturally or politically involved or, or uh, not actually involved, but, but encounter with. So these problems should be placed, should be uh, a reason to the common stream, just to get aware everyone, to uh, for everyone's understanding and comprehension. Once everyone gets the note of such problem, then they uh, get the solution, get the ideas how to find the solutions for such problems. As Jamil Jan Kuchi has done, uh, has written many things that are. Um, uh, uh, mentioning, noticing us some of the bad cultures there in uh, Afghanistan or uh, here in our rural uh, areas, uh, which uh, we, we, which should be noticed very clearly, and uh, with which we should be very realistic. We shouldn't go beyond such problems, and we shouldn't overshadow them. Just in case to solve them and bring them to the common area and find the solutions for that. I think Jamil Jan has done the same job, and uh, he has for some cultural and political problem. So these, these things uh, can be a very effective and understanding for all the people. But our job is not just to read the books, just to get information, uh, and just to find the reasons why we are in this situation. Our job is to find the solution. As a young generation, we are strongly supposed to work on solutions, work on some, some ideas that can really cure our, our injuries, cure our wounds. So this is the demand of every person of Afghanistan or especially every person of the era. So uh, I, I think we, we are very optimistic about the book, even though uh, I can be able to read the whole book uh, as we were supposed to do but we can give you additionally some very good points that's wonderful so if somebody from the audience would like to come and speak about the book and tell us what they thought and share their um, their findings from the book with us yeah. that would be lovely Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Harun. What happened? Uh, I have studied this book uh, and got this book very late, uh, but uh, didn't study studied all of on the whole of this book. Uh, I, this book is a collection of some uh, cultural of views of Afghanistan, of Afghanistan and also uh, the laws uh, uh, in Afghanistan, uh, cultural views in Afghanistan, behavior of, fa of fathers and parents were with their children, uh, and. Uh, uh, behavior of uh, teaching uh, children with each other uh, with each other uh, I uh, studied and especially good uh, story story and uh, uh, I have got uh, a good uh, moral from this book was this that uh, when uh, uh, parents uh, treat uh, their children and show their children was this that uh, when they are uneducated and they uh, are brave, 
you want to uh, and would like to be their children like them and don't don't leave them to get an education and have a good behavior uh, if they have uh, un if they are uneducated and they don't have education and uh, they are brave and don't uh, uh, familiar with uh, uh, current technologies computer internet and they also don't leave their children to learn these these things i have learned this thing from uh, uh, this book and also i have uh, learned from this book uh, I studied in these books uh, and the russian attacks on afghanistan and destroyed all of our achievements uh, in that time uh, in that time uh, uh, president daud khan uh, established the republic islamic republic of afghanistan uh, in that time and that was the first time that we have a republic in our country but uh, uh, russian attacks and uh, communist regime uh, uh, finished all of these achievements and uh, uh, destroyed all of our uh, achievement uh, achievement that we had in uh, uh, economy side uh, education side uh, uh, and also uh, we have a uh, uh, brave army and uh, uh, in the equipped uh, army, army in that time this all of finished with the uh, Ru russian attacks and uh, communist uh, regime uh, and these books show us that uh, how we uh, finished all of uh, our domestic wars uh, and don't have uh, uh, dis discrimination in our in our country and have a good behavior with our with our children uh, and uh, also we must support our, co our country and our government also in that time uh, russian soldiers uh, did a lot of uh, uh, things that we can't uh, forget uh, these things uh, we heard uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, stories about uh, of cruelty of them that they did with afghan uh, uh, people and also with afghan children women uh, and uh, you get people especially with our islamic uh, uh, persons uh, ulama they killed a lot of our uh, uh, a huge amount of our uh, ulama in that time and the uh, and the didn't let us to get education and the uh, finished all of our achievements in that time we had in that time we were uh, uh, we had a lot of achievements that uh, our neighbor countries uh, come, uh, students come to our country and uh, get education uh, here uh, and the, uh, the, our country give them uh, some scholars to them uh, to the to their children to come to uh, our country and study uh, study here but all of these uh, uh, Things and these achievements destroyed by the uh, Russian soldiers uh, and, and uh, by the communist uh, regime in our country. Thank you so much for those. Um, this is all I uh, hope about uh, this book. Thank you so much for sharing that. But what I would really also like to know is um, have you ever been to Logard? Afghanistan, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. He put his comment, but actually we are facing some uh, network problem. But we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, you, I want you to Yes, so I wanted to know if somebody from the audience will, has been to Logar, and if so, if they could come and speak to us about how Logar, uh, what it looks like, and what um, what is the place like, so we could imagine it in our minds through their lens. Yeah, actually, I think everyone has been to Logar because um, uh, it's on the way to Kabul, to the capital uh, from its Kabul. So from Khost, uh, we uh, have to cross Logar uh, and also Paktia uh, in order to reach Kabul. So this way, anyone uh, has crossed and been to Logar, it's, it's generally uh, uh, most areas of Afghanistan are uh, uh, the same, but uh, it may have some different uh, virtues or characteristics, and uh, I'll ask them if they have any additional information they'll share. Wonderful. Thank you. Anyone who has been to Logar and has some things and feelings about Logar information? Yeah. 
Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hope everybody is fine and happy. Uh, let me give you a brief uh, description about Lugar province. Uh, Lugar province is uh, between Kabul and Pakya provinces. Uh, it's like, uh, for example, it has deserts. Beside the deserts, uh, it has, for example, great uh, lane for cultivation and uh, things like that. And uh, Lugar speak both uh, Pashto and Dari languages. And uh, uh, majority of the people uh, who live there are Muslims and majority of them uh, who, for example, get the income of, of uh, from uh, for farming or, for example, from cultivation. And these are something uh, very famous about Lugar. If you need any, uh, if you want to have some questions about Lugar, regarding the Lugar, I would love to hear from you. Okay, so what I want to know is, what is the weather like? Is it generally... Pardon me, I don't have you. Warm and the winter's pleasant. I don't have your sound very clear. Could you repeat that again, please? Yes, I wanted to know what is the weather like in Lugar? Yeah, usually in winter. Is it normal temperature? Yeah, usually in winter it's snowy. It has snow, uh, mountain, uh, snowy mountains and it's really uh, cold there. Uh, but in uh, summer season, uh, it's not as much hot as uh, in other provinces of Afghanistan like Jalalabad. It's really hot there. And also in Peshawar, it's really hot there. But in uh, Logar province, it's not very hot, especially in summer. But it's really cold uh, if you go there in winter. In living there is quite difficult in winter season. And um, what about the people over there? You told us that most of the people are agriculturists in, in Logar. So um, are, yes. are there any bazaars? Are there any community centers? So what do the people over there do for entertainment, for example? Uh, yeah, we have got uh, a national game in Lugar province. They are well, this, that is called Buskashi. Uh, usually, people who live in Lugar and they do Buskashi for uh, entertainment purposes. And beside that, uh, nowadays we have got a lot of people that they go to school and beside the school they play cricket, volleyball, or uh, football. Uh, but these are modern games played here in uh, Lugar. But in the first, uh, but in the past, uh, people didn't play these games. Only Buskashi was the famous game people played for inter entertainment purposes. Wonderful. So I, um, I would love for you to share what Buskashi actually is for our audience. I know a little about it, but I would love to know exactly how yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Buskashi, uh, a few players play in the game. For example, might be 12 or 15 uh, play, uh, players who have a hearse. Uh, they, for example, start the hearse very quickly and they sit something on the ground and they have got a, a spear. Through the spear and with the spear, they take the, for example, something that is being on the ground. If anyone takes that uh, from the ground, uh, uh, for example, when they go uh, on the hearse, so they win, for example, the prize and reward. So the target is a girt. Yeah, a girt, uh, the girt, which is called girt. I, I didn't know in English, but it is called girt. Uh, the girt is taken from the ground. So once the girt is taken, they win the prize. So it's a game like that. So what is a girt exactly? Is it a kettle? Is it a cow? Yeah, yeah good sheep. Oh my God, okay. Uh, sometimes it's like it's a goat or a sheep, but sometimes it's not a goat in sheep, something smaller. Like, for example, we can call uh, a wood or like a container, things like that, that are visible on the ground. So they are put there and taken. So, but uh, if, if it is across the country, they usually put a goat on the ground or a sheep on the ground and they uh, hit it with a spear. Once they pick off the goat or the sheep, they win the prize. So, but it is usually done across the country uh, whenever they set a goat on the ground or a sheep on the ground. Oh, wonderful. So basically there are two teams and there are roughly around 14 to 15 members in each team and they play against each other 
Yeah, usually uh, the teams are not the the game is played individually. There are not teams and the game, for example, everybody who has got a hearse, they, for example, uh, get onto the hearse and do the job their own selves. Anyone who picks off uh, the container or the wood or something like a sheep or goat, they win. It's individual game, not uh, a team game. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And it is the national game of Afghanistan and it is one of the yeah. oldest games uh, that are found in this particular region. Yeah, yeah, a game played all over the Afghanistan in can call it can we can call him a national game of Afghanistan. But it's really wonderful. Everybody comes out and watch the game, the game as spectators from uh, children to the older people who live in Afghanistan and especially in the area. Wonderful. And another question that I have is that, um, especially when we talk about Buskashi, I understand that it is like a huge crowd gathers around and then yeah. the, then the um, actual event takes place in, a, in, a, in an open space, like a big ground, right? And what, yeah. do I, what I want to know is, I have gotten of the historical pictures, is that um, men, women, children, elderly, all would go out. It was an open event for everyone to attend. And women also used to attend this, this event. Is it still permissible for women to go out and attend this event? Or um, is it a completely masculine uh, sphere now? Yeah, uh, as for the culture uh, restrictions and limitations, uh, women are uh, a rare thing there. Usually the boys and the men uh, go out and entertain this game. Uh, usually women are not seen there, but uh, however, we see uh, some of them these days, but in the past or uh, Usually in these uh, 20 or 10, 20, 15 uh, years, we haven't seen a lot of women in the ground watching the game, but uh, however, we see them rarely these days. And traditionally, women do take in these games as well. Yeah, it might be in the past, but not, the, uh, but not as in, the, in a big amount as uh, in the past. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I am 100% sure that all our friends in Pakistan were extremely um, enchanted by the whole Buskashi. I would really encourage all the friends in Pakistan to look it up online. You will find some wonderful photographs and some lovely um, stories related to Buskashi and the whole, whole idea of games bringing honor to communities because it was such a big deal that the person who won the won the buskashi competition did not just win it for themselves individually but actually won it for the whole tribe and they used to have tournaments and everybody from across the country would get together and the one who and whichever tribe district province won the competition held that that title for a whole year so it's like it's a very indigenous and beautiful game that brought people together. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, indigenous traditional game to explore for our friends in Pakistan. And thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with us. We thank really you so much. Uh, thank you so much. The difference between the, the games as we have modern games like football and cricket we also have these games but besides the game we have got buskashi but the audience who are watching buskashi is completely different from the games of cricket or football or volleyball something like that so it gives you uh, a positive uh, impact in a positive impression so we can call it a, a game in a national game of afghanistan in a great in honorable game for afghanistan thank you for asking me some questions and that was wonderful moment to answer your questions. Thank you so much for that. And on that note, let's move on to our friends in Pakistan and ask our students um, what they thought about the book 99 Nights in Logar. And if they have any questions that they would like to ask their Afghan friends. So, um, uh, Fesabad, over to you. Um, I would like to uh, share my views about the um, book. So according to me, the story was full of humor and heart filled with like adventure and uh, imagination. 
so uh, this i think this novel that, uh, reg uh, that uh, this is a novel that uh, regrets about all that has been lost and um, runs after what can still be recovered so i would just like to uh, i would like that to tell that something about the book that uh, about the story start with about a, it was a story about a 12 year old mervin who moved to us 6 years ago but uh, it is returning home but returning home over in afghanistan for the summer uh, he was guilt uh, over his past cruel treatment of the uh, dog which was uh, according to them there was a guard dog budabash so i think because he did so because of the perception of the dogs in the us or something but his remorse led uh, budabash biting off uh, uh, the tip of his index finger and then proceeding to run away so the, uh, in this story was the um the way it was described and it was an adventurous and like i loved the book thank you thank you so much fatma and i love the fact that you understood the concept of buddha bash and his interjection into the story because one of the most wonderful uh, angle of this book and ramil jan kochai's writing is that he has taken fiction to a completely different level he is using his own memories but he's also using his imagination so i mean there are so many elements in the book which are like um, which go beyond reality right so there is like that superimposed reality of a child's imagination so it's like literally taking science fiction into it i mean the whole concept of budabash and this dog who is as huge as a wolf and a giant so often times when 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 budabash comes into the plot you are kind of left wondering okay so is this a dog is this a wolf or is this some absolutely different beast altogether so that that is something that that really is lovely and even though throughout the book there is a sort of love hate between budabash and our central um, uh, figure they as we move towards the end there is that app, matlab the, the writer leaves it to your imagination to explore but gives you a very good inkling that the relationship between budabash and the and our protagonist is is one of attachment and one of um, deep connection and friendship because if if you were to explore these characters budabash has a sort of connection with the protagonist but because he knows that the protagonist is going to leave him after the summer he doesn't want to get attached to it and on the contrary bites off his index finger because it feels that you left me alone over here so it's kind of showing its anger you know it's 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 loss and it's fear that it's it's going to leave anyways but still towards the end we come to realize that even though parting is is difficult but the time that they have is enough to build memories on and as they move on like you know in the closing as they go together they walk together it's giving you that that moment in your head that it's not just one visit it's going to happen time and again and again and that is jamil jan kochai's reality he has an one who has settled in the united states found himself a life but he still has a life back home he wants to keep visiting his homeland he wants to keep maintaining those relationships and he wants to be an afwan in the united states and an afwan in afghanistan which is something that to me was really poignant and beautiful because even though he is in a foreign land there is a part of him that will truly always remain in an afghanistan and that we see very clearly as we read the book on that note let's ask any other friends in in faisalabad who'd like to come uh, who'd like to share their views on the book so faisalabad over to you anybody else would like to shed light 
ये स्टूडेंट्स एनी वन ऑफ यू वॉन्ट टू शेयर योर एक्सपीरियंस रीडिंग जी प्लीज what i think about the book is that it's kind of an adventure story about a search of 99 nights in which the boy along with his cousins gets to explore more and it kind of revolves around how childhood was in afghanistan and gives us an impression of how kids spend their time when the russian soldiers were there and kind of the culture there absolutely yes that's exactly what it is it is the story of a little boy who is out one day playing with his friends in a free and uh, progressive afghanistan and then suddenly he is not that boy and his country is under siege by foreign invasion and he is still a boy who's exploring exploring his childhood with his cousins and going out for adventures but the world around him is changing and that is what he's trying to explain that for a child it's all an adventure but the world keeps changing on that thought let's move to our friends in afghanistan and ask them as to when they were reading this book were there any moments or passages in the book that really resonated with them and they'd like to talk about those so afghanistan over to you is there anyone masir Do you have anything to share about the book? Yeah, just general information. Yeah, you can give them the general information. Hi there. Uh, as a whole this book is uh, a collection of some cultural views of afghanistan uh, as my uh, uh, other other uh, of my friend mentioned that uh, at the post most of the parents imposed uh, their children like they were uh, uneducated and they wants to be their children like them too but uh, nowadays we have facilities for children to get education and it is not a good idea that i am not educated and i don't want to pave the facilities to our children to get education uh, if uh, we are not educated then we must try our best to send our children to school and get education and uh, one thing more uh, generally parents make conversation about war it really affect on their minds i mean on uh, the children's mind they are talking about anger revenge gun tanks and hurt and uh, one thing uh, uh, i want to share about dog a uh, one people save dogs in their houses cause dog can keep their house safe and uh, dog can uh, a uh, dog can keep their property safe you know dog dog is like an alarm when it spark the family member get awake and uh, they protect their anything they they in their house from thieves and that's what uh, i shared with you thank you so much and thank you for sharing the the role of the dog in an afghan community because that really explains why uh, why jameen yeah. jan kuchri introduces the character of budabash so yeah um, let me let me li- illustrate a little bit of his finds all that he wanted to say raise that uh, uh, some of the bad and some of the good uh, c- cultures also he said that uh, most of the times in the book uh, uh, parents try to have their children as they were you know they define their present from their past it means that if they were educated or uneducated in the past they try to have their children uneducated which is the bad culture and which is uh, uh, something very terrible for parents and also if they were uh, uh, educated in the past they had the facilities in the past they try to facilitate uh, to their children as well so uh, that could be generally he means that uh, parents from their past 
but sometimes they get the wrong concept from their past. We can learn from our past negatively and positively. Like if you are uneducated in the past, if you had nothing in the past, try to provide good facilities for your children. This would be a positive lesson. But if you just try to keep your children as you were in the past, this would be a very negative and uh, a negative concept and a negative uh, result because we cannot expect our children any positive outcome uh, 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 in order to, to, to give us the positive outcome uh, just in situation like we are not providing anything for them because they are something that the, the, the children or young generations are uh, uh, something like a, a recycle you know whatever you give you can take so it, it is really important to uh, train your children with, uh, with some good uh, uh, manner, with some good uh, uh, norms. And also he mentions about uh, some other cultures uh, like uh, uh, making conversation about war in front of your children, which is not a good way to teach uh, your children and raise your children. Because uh, here in the book, we have a few examples of that. They try to motivate the children to help each other in their school uh, work or homeworks. So their, their words goes like this, like they have some words that Marwan teaches to the, the words go like this, for example, war, which means junk or um, uh, anger, which means or uh, some other words like uh, hurt, mean, which means uh, so these words are placed in their subconscious because of their parents' conversation about such things. If you are practicing such things in front of your children, these things take place in their subconscious, in their minds, and in the upcoming time, these things like especially what? It, 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 it takes a very, a very special place in their heart, in their minds. So it will be a very easy phenomenon for them because they get addicted to such words. And, and this has uh, been criticized on most, of, most of the times in our curriculum as well. That in the past, we heard some curriculums that teach students about what? You know, about a rifle, about a, a, a word about uh, these things, nonsense things, or so-called word. And nowadays, likely, it's been removed from our curriculum, and also parents try to uh, have and convey positive message to their children, but we still have the problem and needs fixing. Thank you so much for that. And on that note, I would like to share something with all of you. Um, we had the pleasure of having Jamil Jan Kochai attend one of the book clubs across borders session. And in that, he spoke about what the book meant to him, why he decided to write it. And that out of that session, we have put together a little excerpt, which we would like to share with you to get more insight into the book. So um, I'm going to share my screen with everybody. I'm, I just need a minute. My uh, screen sharing is disabled. I'm just going to go and connect that through my IT. While that is happening, I would love for Hurmat and Aruj uh, and uh, Sana if they could take the conversation forward and I'll just be back in a minute. Um, hi everyone. I hope you all can hear me. Um, so when Alia asked us what were the, um, some so, moments um, in the book. I, my screen sharing is on. So oh, I'm okay. Gonna quickly take everyone to um, the excerpt that we have selected especially for everybody to enjoy. Uh, so I, I grew up here in, um, in California, in America, but, um, uh, but I was born in Pekhawar, Pakistan, and, um, and I came to the States when I was um, about one years old. And so, um, and so I, I grew up my whole life sort of uh, being told stories about Afghanistan, being told stories about my father's village, in Logar and, um, and my mother's childhood in Logar. And, um, and we would also visit um, from time to time. So when I was six years old, I went to, we went to um, Logar, Afghanistan for the first time. And then again, when I was 12 years old, um, uh, in 2005, uh, we went to Logar, Afghanistan again. They spent uh, about four months there. And, you know, I, 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 really loved, I really loved the village. I really loved Afghanistan. I really loved the people. Uh, the Afghan people, I really loved, um, you know, when I was there in Logar, I felt more, um, 
I felt more loved and I felt more friendship and I felt more, um, you know, companionship from my, from my cousins and my family members and, um, and the other villagers there that I met in Logar. Um, that, that it really just stayed in my heart. It lingered in my heart for a long time. And, and these memories stayed with me. And, um, and so when, as I got older, you know, um, and I began writing uh, at the university here in California, um, the main thing that I, the only thing that I really wanted to write about was, um, was were these memories that I had of Logar and, uh, uh, and of my father's stories and of my mother's stories. And, um, and really, that, that was really the main reason I think I began writing this, this, this book was because I wanted to explore these memories again, because I wanted to be there in those times again, um, you know, with my cousins and my friends on the, um, you know, on the roads of the village, uh, swimming in the streams, climbing the trees, um, and, uh, and sort of experiencing that again. And, um, and so, you know, for, for me, it, it almost wasn't a choice. I, I felt like I had to write these stories down. One of the most difficult parts of, of writing this book was, um, was first like the, the historical research that went into the book. You know, I really wanted to, um, I, uh, in the book, I'm exploring history in Logar, what happened, um, you know, in my father's home village in, in Logar, Afghanistan. And, um, and it was important for me that, that I made sure that I got certain elements of that history um, correct, that, that, um, that these, you know, these incidents that occurred, um, that I brought light to those incidents. And, um, and the other thing was, you know, there are also other elements of this book that, um, that are very, that are very personal and that are very, you know, um, precious, especially um, to my father, certain, certain parts of the book, I'm, I'm exploring my family history, and I'm exploring, um, you know, um, very tragic events, um, the, the death of loved ones, the, the murder of loved ones. And, um, and when I was writing those chapters and when I was writing about those people, it was really important to me that, um, that I did justice to those stories, that I made sure that I told like a certain truth about those stories. And so, and so I, I would make sure I would go and I would interview my father and I would talk to him about these times. And, um, and those were, I think, some of the most difficult conversations that I would have. It's very difficult for my father to speak, um, for example, about, you know, the, the Soviet war and, um, and the things, the, you know, the, the killings and the bombings that occurred in Logar at that time. And, um, and uh, but, but alhamdulillah, you know, my, my father was very supportive of the book. My family has been very supportive of the book. So anytime I had a question or I needed them to retell me a story, um, they've always been very willing to help. And so, you know, I think without their support, I might not have ever been able to finish this book. I really owe a lot to my, to my parents and to my uh, family as a whole. It's really important for me that, um, that any of my readers, no matter what their age or what their background or, um, or where they're coming from, uh, but I really wanted them to just be able to, to enjoy this book. Like it was really important for me um, that this book was funny, um, that this book was, was a joyous experience, that, um, that, that it felt like an adventure while reading this book, um, because I wanted those elements to sort of be as important as, um, you know, the deeper messages of the book about, about war and, and history and violence or whatever else. So I wanted, I wanted the experience of the reading of this book to both be, you know, uh, a joyous experience, but also sort of, um, for, uh, but also an occasion, um, you know, to, the, to be able to reflect upon um, the ways that, that violence or war can alter a childhood. Um, or, or, or also, you know, an in, in, in opportunity to reflect upon our own childhoods and our own memories and the ways that, um, uh, that, that, you know, the ways that, that our own childhoods or our own memories um, have been changed by, by different political circumstances um, that, that have been out of our hands. I wanted it to be a really, um, uh, I wanted it to be authentic and sort of true, uh, to, to the voice that the, to the voices and to the, you know, uh, to the stories that, that I experienced in my own household, um, or, or even, you know, in other households, um, uh, and relatives. And, um, and so that's why, you know, that's why I ended up incorporating those elements of, of Pakhto and Farsi and Arabic or whatever else. Um, just because I wanted it to be true to the voice that I grew up sort of speaking and hearing. Uh, 
All right. So that was Jamil Jan Kochai explaining the book, um, explaining why he felt this urge to write this book, and then also talking about events that shaped his perception of, of Logar and talking to us about, about his need to write. And uh, um, now I would like to ask both my friends in Pakistan and Afghanistan to reflect upon what he said and share their thoughts as to how important it is to put your thoughts on paper, to have this urge to write. And what does writing actually do? It, it is sort of like a catharsis, you know, oftentimes um, with so many memories in your mind, with so many thoughts constantly, um, you know, filling up your headspace. A lot of times putting it as a story on paper helps you in finding your closure to those stories. So I think for Jamil Jan Kochai, the whole process was very cathartic and he actually indulged in it because he wanted to make sense of his life in Logar, his life in America and his Afghan and American identity. And to a certain degree, it helped him. So um, on that thought, I'd like to ask my friends, both in Pakistan and Afghanistan, to share their thoughts on it. Whoever would like to go first, um, we can go to Khost first. Um, so Afghanistan, if you'd like to talk about that, and then we'll move to, to Pakistan and get opinions on that. Would you like to reflect on the Jamil Jan Kuchi? Okay, uh, Jamil Jan Kuchai, who has written the book, he has done very well. Uh, uh, the benefit of the book is to transform information from one generation to another, and also to explain what really is Afghan society. And beside that, to explain a little bit of our culture and to differentiate between our, our culture and other people's culture. So I think uh, he has done uh, a better job and it motivates us as well in order to write our stories, our life stories, our ups and downs on the, for example, uh, front of the paper to transfer our information in our stories to other generations as well. So I think he has done a very good job and he has done something uh, for the benefit of the people. Yes, I have another question. So when you were reading the book, you all make a vision of what the writer would be like. So um, when you actually heard Jamil Jan Kochai and you saw him, did he fit what you had imagined him to be, or was he different? Uh, can you repeat it? The voice wasn't clear. I didn't hear your sound. Okay, so I was asking that when, all, when we all read a book, we make a impression of what the writer would be like. So when you saw Jamil Jan Kochai and heard him speak, was he similar to what you had imagined him to be, or was he different? And so. Why? No, in fact, he was not looking like uh, a person who has written the book, uh, the appearance he has, uh, the body style he has. He was completely different. Uh, but uh, if you have a look at the, at the book, uh, he, uh, the story is completely different. And you can imagine him as the writer of the book. It was completely different. And, and were you, was it a good difference or a bad difference? Yeah, it was a good difference. Uh, it, it was, uh, in fact, a good difference. And uh, we can... Kuchi people are not that modern as he yeah, was. Yeah, uh, as uh, the coordinator said, the Kuchi's people who are living here, uh, who live uh, in Logar and Coast, they are not similar to him. He is different and we are uh, proud of that, that he made that, mix, uh, that big difference in his life. Oh, wonderful. So thank you means that the Kuchai tribe in, uh, in Afghanistan is, is different from what Jamil Jan Kuchai looks like. And yeah, could you, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, 
if we have a look to the people uh, who live in Afghanistan, especially the people like Kochi's people, they move from one place to another place uh, season by season. For example, people who live uh, in Logar in their Kuchyan, they move to Khus in summer season. Once, for example, the summer is gone, sorry, in winter season, once the winter season is gone in Venice, they go back to Logar. So usually their duty and their job is to handle their herds and their sheep and they are not doing their businesses especially they are not pursuing their academic uh, goals so usually their life is completely different in our area as well but having someone in Kuchai's tribe like uh, Jamil Kuchai it's been nominal and it's a great story oh wow so basically the Kuchais are nomads and they move from place to place with their herds and they don't have a central locality where they are. And because they are cattle herders, they don't really pursue a lot of education or businesses. So he yeah. is a set, he's redefined what it means to be a Kochai. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Kuch Kuchan uh, are from Logar province, but uh, they also live in Khus, Pakya, and some other provinces as well. As I said earlier, their main duty is to look after their herds, uh, do their, for example, farms or something like that. Uh, and they are not usually pursuing their education. But nowadays, it's like uh, a little bit different. We have got some great, great people in Kuchyan as well that they are pursuing their uh, academic goals uh, in Afghanistan and outside Afghanistan as well. But it was in the past, but nowadays it's a little bit different. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I mean, you have been amazingly helpful and told us so many intricate details that, um, that one would have never known unless we would have spoken to you. So thank you so much for that. And the whole thank idea of the clubs is to exchange our cultures, to explore yeah. our culture, and to get better yeah. understanding of each other. And you have been extremely helpful in that. So thank you very much. Thank you Unfortunately, so much. Thank you. We have Thanks from uh, um, your collaboration as well. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good time. Our pleasure. Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time and I just have um, a few minutes left. So I would ask my friends in Pakistan to, if anybody from, from Pestabad would like to come in and give a closing note on what they thought about uh, the, the author after listening to him and after seeing him, and they would like to shed some light on that. Uh, I would like to say something like, uh, uh, I was very, uh, Jamil Dan was very unknown writer for me, but when I read this book, it was a very nice book because the, the way uh, the relation between a pet and uh, is described and how he paints a picture of the, the forbidding geography of Afghanistan, um, the, its history and culture with the, the its strong tradition of uh, um, storytelling with its myths and legends and the nature of family, uh, extended family though. This uh, and uh, he's now he's one of the best uh, authors according to my list <laughs> thank you thank you so much and i'm so glad that you enjoyed uh, meeting him and i'm hoping that when his next book comes out in the summer of 2021 he will definitely go out and grab that book and read it and maybe you could tell us how you thought about it and whether it should be added to our new book list so on that note i'm i would like to thank each and every one of you for being such an amazing audience, for being such amazing members of this book club, for taking out time to read the books, for taking out time to come together on this platform and discuss what you have uncovered through this wonderful journey of, of sharing books. And uh, um, just on a, on a closing note, I would like to tell you, we have had the opportunity and the pleasure of meeting a lot of authors, writers, poets, philosophers in, our, in the course of the job that we do. And one thing that we have found common amongst each and every one of them is that all of them are actors. So I think 
I have understood from that, that if you want to succeed in life, you have to be good readers. And by only by being good readers, are going to be able to open our minds and know about the world outside of our own little world that we call home. It is very important in this day and age to know as much about the others as we can. So um, on that note, I request each and every one of you to continue reading with or without the book clubs. Keep sharing your ideas with one another. And another little thing that we would really like to encourage all of you to do is to share these thoughts, memories, and um, conversations that we have in this book club with people less privileged than us, people less exposed to books than us, so they can benefit from our learning. And on that note, I'd like to say for the office, and I'm signing out from Karachi, it was a lovely, ple um, it was lovely being around all of you, getting to know your ideas, listening to your thoughts, and I look forward to another amazing session with you next month. Till then, for the office.